Hiranya Peyris wants to look back into the past, to when it all began, to the most monumental of questions. Why does it all exist? Stars, galaxies, Earth, you. Right after the Big Bang, everything was just an enormous diluted soup, a bunch of meaningless particles just floating around. And it could have remained just like this forever, a lifeless universe without anything to see, without anything to take hold of, ever. But then something began to shake and stir in the soup, causing particles to clump together into atoms, which became gas clouds, which became huge strings of galaxies. And within these, stars and planets. And on one of them, you and I. This stirring of the soup was done by something called primordial ripples. But as of now, scientists still don't know how these primordial ripples were able to turn nothing into everything. It is questions like these that Hiranya wants to answer. Without those little ripples, we would not be here as we see the universe today. So by studying the properties of these primordial ripples, we can work out what went on during the Big Bang and just afterwards, and thereby answer one of the biggest questions that can be asked, which is, where did we come from? Why everything exists? And I think that is the biggest thing. <laughs> Hiranya Peyris is fascinated with the history of astronomy and the technological developments that have constantly led to new answers to ever greater questions. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I want to see something through it. Tonight, she is visiting the old observatory in Salzschirbaden outside Stockholm. When people started to build this telescope 100 years ago, our understanding of our universe was very different. We were just beginning to discover that our own galaxy was not the only thing in the universe, that there were other galaxies. And since then, uh, we have started to survey the universe in a much bigger scale. We now know there are hundreds of millions of galaxies out there and we can measure them. And so our understanding of the universe and our place in it has come very far since then. Hiranya was born in Sri Lanka. Her mother was the country's first woman engineer. She's a very inspiring person. When I was young, I uh, saw her building bridges, wearing a sari, and uh, managing teams of people. And uh, that was very inspiring to her, for me. And Hiranya's longing for space was born as she read books by Stephen Hawking, and when she was given the opportunity to visit the home of the legendary Arthur C. Clarke, author of 2001, A Space Odyssey. As a kid, I remember going over to his house. He had this amazing uh, library of science fiction movies. I remember watching those there. He, he was an inspiring person. But everything turns upside down. Civil war breaks out in Sri Lanka. And at this point, the road to space seems very long. But after some time, the family moves to England. Hiranya gets the chance to study physics on the historic grounds of Cambridge, where, among others, she gets to meet the man whose books she read as a child, Stephen Hawking, who is a professor here. Her mother, the engineer, gets to witness her Hiranya graduate. And after this, she lands her dream summer job at NASA. Being at NASA is amazing, yeah. She is working with a space probe, which she gets to see as it takes brand new images of Jupiter's moon, Europa. I learned firsthand what it was like to see an image that no human being had seen before. And I just love that thrill of discovery. Uh, I think that's one of the things that drives me to keep working uh, in this area. Today, Hiranya Peyris is at Alba Nova in Stockholm, where she is the head of the Oscar Klein Center, where astronomical scientists from many different disciplines collaborate. Together, they are now trying something monumental, to look back all the way to the birth of the universe. Because to date, no one has come closer than this. 
This rather strange image was taken by a space probe a dozen years ago. Here we see space in all directions around us, much like when you see our round globe on a flat map. What we see here is a youngster, a baby universe, without stars, where the only thing there is that diluted soup of particles that existed right at the beginning. But even here, one can already detect the primordial ripples. This is the whole universe as it was uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And uh, the little variations uh, in the primordial ripples are imprinted as regions that are hotter and colder than average. So th there are hot spots and cold spots. You can see this pattern. And the differences in temperature, the differences in color here, caused by the ripples, and thus the stars, and thus we. And to look further back in time than ever before, to understand how the primordial ripples managed to create everything, Hiranya Peiris's team will use a very special telescope being built in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. The LSST is a very exciting new way to survey the universe. So this is a huge survey of the sky over a time span of 10 years but it is a uh, spectacularly designed telescope which can take big pictures of the sky very quickly. So it opens up a new way to survey the universe called the time domain. It's essentially making a movie. So compare uh, taking one picture to making a movie. And so that's the kind of change that we are going to have in our understanding of the universe. LSST will give us huge amounts of new data, which Hiranya and her team will stuff into supercomputers to count down backwards in time, to make a movie that they can rewind so far back that they can see the primordial ripples right there at the beginning. Like this, imagine the evolution of the universe along this timeline. At the far left, the Big Bang, and now we are here, where the new telescope will show the galaxies as they look today. And the computers will then be able to follow the shape of the galaxy structures backwards through time, as far back as to 380,000 years after the Big Bang, our now earliest image of the universe. And then, what is totally new, right through that image, to draw the primordial ripples as they looked when they made it so that nothing became everything. Those properties will tell us about the physics that went on just after the Big Bang, and uh, therefore tell us about the origin of all the structure in the universe. So that is the big goal, and the primordial ripples, mapping them out is the key to that.